Hi, this is a second video for the INTC 1291 introduction to test equipment at Bradsport College. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to provide loop power and the functions of the setup button. I was going to use this video to describe, you know, sourcing. However, just loop power and setup takes about 10-15 minutes, so I'm going to keep it to just that in that in this video. All right, so. First thing I want to bring up is when we're providing loop power, a lot of people think, oh, we're sourcing loop power, which we are, okay? And we're going to be using, down here in the ports, as we described in the last video, a pair of these red ports over here, all right? Now, the confusing part, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to go into setup. In order to provide loop power, we have to hit the setup button. And it's the very first thing that we can do. And it says loop power right now is disabled. Now I don't have any wires hooked up, so I, I can go ahead and enable it just to show you. But I'm gonna hit enter on it because it's highlighted. And then I, I have two options or three options really. Disabled, enable 24 volts, and disable or enabled 28 volts. And this is the confusing part for some people. Because it leads you to believe that we're basically sourcing voltage, which isn't exactly true. I mean we are. Right? It, this thing's going to provide a voltage, a fixed voltage of either 24 or 28. But it confuses people when it comes to where they're going to hook up the wires. Right? So if, if I were just to read this, hey, enable 24 volts, oh, I'm going to be sourcing loop power. Oh, that's sourcing voltage. Plug in here, which is where the red V is. But it won't work. Right? What you're actually doing is sourcing loop power. Right? Power is not just voltage. It also requires current. Right? And hopefully in, in your 1401, 1441, your instructors have given you a good clarification of the difference between voltage, current, and power. Right? So voltage can be present by itself. If I just have two wires hooked up, and I just have, you know, here they are. Right? I go ahead and plug them in. They're not connected to anything. If I just have two, two wires here, and it's unhooked up to anything, then there's no complete path for current to flow. Right? If I were to enable the voltage right now, or the loop power, I'd have voltage present, but no current. At that point, I wouldn't actually have power. I would only have voltage. Power requires voltage to be present and a complete path for current to flow. So power is current and voltage. And it, that's actually the mathematical formula is voltage times current calculates your power. Right? So... I can have voltage without current, but I cannot have current without voltage. So when I'm providing loop power, I'm really concerned about providing current. Because in order to provide the current, I have to be providing voltage, right? So if this meter is going to provide loop power, and I pick the 28 volts, I'm actually going to plug into where it says source milliamps, because I'm going to be sourcing current in order to source loop power. Right. That is one of the things that's that's confusing. I wish they would kind of put down here, you know, instead of saying sourcing, whatever, they would actually say, hey, loop power down here as well. So you knew it was these two. If there's one change, hopefully they made that change on the 754. Right. I'm not actually going to enable this right now because I just have dangling wires. But I'm going to go ahead and go through and show you. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. So I know it's on disabled. I'm going to hit enter. And we're going to be demonstrating providing loop power to this Rosemont 30, 40, well, 3051, sorry. This is a differential pressure Rosemont transmitter. Right? And if we take a look at it, give the camera time to focus. You see we have three terminals. One is my positive, one is my negative, and another one's a positive, right? Well, these two, you see where it says power slash com, that stands for power and communication, right? I'm gonna, this is my positive for hooking up power. This is my negative for hooking up power. I'll go ahead and take my red wire, which we have terminated with forks. Take my black wire or my negative. Go ahead and slide that in there. I'm going to take the black wire, and again, because I'm providing loop power, and I understand that it's more important 
that I'm providing current. I'm going to plug into the negative port for sourcing current. And my red wire being my positive, make sure that goes to the red, which is positive. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and show you this thing is not on. It's very, very important that you do not en enable the voltage before you hook up the wires. Right? I would I highly discourage people to terminate or lift any wires that have potential voltage or power um, available to them. As you know, with a lot of instrumentations, this is out in the field and you could have vapors or gas clouds out there that are ignitable and doing a termination or lifting can cause that spark that ignites that vapor cloud, right? So be very, very, very cautious. Make sure that there's no power on the wires when you're lifting or terminating these wires. Right? Just a good safety note for you. Bring this in a little bit closer. You see the screen a little bit better. Right? Again, we're on the current ports, sourcing current, which is for providing loop power. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on this. Go down to 28 volts, hit enter. Now loop power should be enabled. I'm going to hit the done button to go back to the screen I was at. If you look at the very top, right, this also gives me a visual indication that loop power is currently on. Let me bring this up here. See, loop power is currently on, 28 volts. And if I flip this over now, all of a sudden you can see, oh, hey, what do you know? The pressure, differential pressure transmitter is powered up. My display is working and it's cycling through, showing me all the information I need to know. Right now, saying it's an alarm. That's the basics of loop power. Um, again, using the milliamp ports for sourcing current to provide loop power. Do not use the voltage ports, it won't work. I'm going to go ahead and go back into setup and disable my loop power. Now that it is disabled, I'm going to go ahead and lift my power wires from my transmitter. All right. Now, now that we're still in here on the setup, I want to go through a few other things. Talking about the setup in its menus. I can hit that choices button and it works kind of like the enter button. It'll show me my choices for that, right? I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit clear. It goes, that's my, also my back button. Reference junction compensation, right? This reference junction compensation menu item is really going to be utilized when we are doing thermocouple or RTD temperature measurement and it's really more for thermocouples because if you remember thermocouples produce a milli voltage based on the differential temperature between the measuring junction which should be touching the process and a reference junction which is normally an ambient temperature or a temperature that we need to know what it is okay. this device this Fluke 744 actually has an internal temperature sensor that will read the ambient temperature normally of whatever right now I'm in a lab you know be in your shop here we are at a, a workbench and it's gonna read the ambient temperature to automatically do reference junction compensation which is actually kind of nice because what, what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to allow you to not have to do some of the math calculations we would normally have to do if you didn't have reference junction compensation i'm not going to get too far into that that's more of a discussion for temperature sensors but do want to give you the idea that it has an option between internal and di internal and external if i hit the options or if i would hit enter you can see internal or external Internal works just fine. We don't have an external reference. Notice how I'm using my arrow keys as I mentioned in the last video. Here's battery stuff, auto battery save. Um, this one's turned off. Um, how 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 long to wait before it turns off? 
uh, backlight if I want the backlight to automatically be on when I turn this thing on how long to time out the backlight um, clear memory right this thing actually has some memories it can store a lot of things um, which we may or may not get to discussing previous and next page right I hit the bottom of the page I'm gonna hit the next page and here I can set the, the date and the time within this device you can see it's May 6th of 2020 and the time is it says 837 in the morning hit next page here's where I can set up things for related to pressure or temperature my units right? so if I'm gonna measure or if I want to source uh, I'm not gonna source pressure with this but if I want to measure pressure this is the unit it's gonna make the measurement in and again as I told you earlier if I wanted to source pressure with the Fluke 744 I need an external pressure sensor in this case the Fluke 750 P05 Right. And I showed you how to connect it in the previous video. Once this connects, I'm going to go ahead and talk about that. It boots up. You're going to hit this clear, this zero button, which was the clear button, right? Back button as well. It zeroes out whatever this is seeing. So you can say that that's my atmospheric reference, zero PSI G. If I scroll down this menu, you can see my temperature units, degrees F, and our options should be degrees Celsius, Fahrenheit, Rankin, and Kelvin. And yep, there they are, Celsius, Fahrenheit, Rankin, and Kelvin. Why they didn't put a degree sign in front of the K, I do not know. Right, temperature scales, we have the ITS-90, and I think it's the IPS, IPTS-68. I'm going to leave it on the ITS-90. And of course, language has a few different languages this supports. I recommend, uh, especially if you're an English speaking person and you don't have any other languages you use, not to change it. Because good luck finding that menu item again and changing it back. Hopefully, the glare is not too bad. I don't know if this backlight helps. No. An ID, we've just set this to BC. This is something user defined, whatever you want to set the ID number to. Next page. This screen is going to tell you when last this meter had any calibration done to it, and specifically what type of calibration. So here you can see that the volts DC measurement capability of this was calibrated in uh, November, you know, November 10th of 2011. But the AC voltage was calibrated in June 30th of 2011, right? This gives you very good detail of when the last time it was calibrated, which is it's kind of important. Well, I'm not going to say kind of important. It's actually out, out in the field, it's very important. Maintaining calibration on your equipment because everything we do in the field is going to be based upon the accuracy of the calibration of the test equipment we, we use to calibrate those items, right? So ensuring that this is calibrated frequently is going to increase the accuracy of our devices. Let me clean this screen off. If I hit next page, it goes back to the first page. All right, so in here we only had one, two, three, four pages within setup. Right? But this is a very, very key function within the meter um, for getting it to read what you, the units you want, um, enabling loop power, seeing the calibration. The last time you know certain functions were calibrated. So this, this is going to conclude this video of talking about just providing loop power and the functions within the menu system of the setup button.